Hey everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and we are continuing on our quest to do a three-level meta analysis in R using the metaphor package. So we are going to pick up where we left off. Where we left off was we had calculated our effect sizes, we had run our overall meta analysis, and we had looked at the sources of variance in our sample, we talked about heterogeneity, and we also looked at outliers and influence. So we have all that calculated, and I still have this loaded, as you can see on the screen, from last time uh, we did this video. So what I'm going to do today is we are just going to walk through how to do a categorical moderator analysis with the metaphor package in R for our three-level analysis. So this is going to seem a little bit complicated. And it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. So I want to tell you a quick overview of what we are going to do before we actually get into this and run through the code. So one of the most confusing things to me coming to metaphor and R from something like comprehensive meta-analysis was the fact that in comprehensive meta-analysis, things are called Q between and Q within. And when we move to metaphor, they are not called that. It is instead we have what's called a test of moderators. And the test of moderators is different depending upon if you have the intercept in the, in the actual analysis or not. And so not only that, but the way that the information is displayed if you have an intercept in a model is different than what I would see in other software programs for conventional models. And so we are going to do this we are, we are going to actually run two different analyses. We are going to run one with, which I'll call the intercept model, in order to calculate our, um, our what would typically be called like a Q-between. It's our test of moderators to see if there's any differences between levels of our moderator variable. And I'm gonna show you how, with the intercept, the table doesn't look like you might expect it to if you've just used other software programs before. So there's nothing wrong with the table. There's actually mathematical ways where you can get the same table, but there's another way that you can do it that's much simpler, which is we just remove the intercept. The challenge is that then you see a different test of moderator that's testing a different thing. And I don't want you to get confused about which one you should report. We're also gonna talk about residual heterogeneity a little bit because people don't talk about that enough. Okay. So we're going to walk through one example here using the grade level as our categorical moderator. So if you recall, this little arrow says anything from the right that happens to the right of that arrow is going to be named whatever is over here on the left. So with moderators, I tend to label things mod dot, and that way I know it's a moderator. Then I have grade, which is what I'm looking at here, and then I have Q, and that's because I'm looking for the Q between value, at least that's what it lives as, as in my head um, from using CMA for so long for conventional meta-analysis. Okay, so we have our same, very similar call that we had before, or command, I should say, not necessarily a call. Same command as before. We're using rma.mv to run our random effects multivariate meta-analysis. We still are using uh, yi and v as our, um, the yi is our effect size, vi is the variance for the effect size. Data is going to be the same. It's going to be dat1, same as we were using before. Again, our structure and Please don't forget, this is super important. You have to have it in here like this, that you have this random equals, uh, you know, this little, I think it's called a tilde, one, then the bar, and then we are nesting effect sizes within studies. Method, we're gonna use REML again. Test, again, we're using T. Uh, DFs, we are again using contain. And down here, this is the new piece, okay? So there's a couple important bits. First of all, mods. We need to have the tilde again, and then we are going to use this uh, thing called factor. So what we are doing is we are saying that for the variable grade C, this is our moderator, is grade C. This is the name of the column in our data set. We want to make this a factor, so we're not. It's not continuous. Okay, so this is going to take each one of these variables and make it a discrete level, rather than trying to treat it as a continuous variable. Down here, we are telling it we want the summary statistics for this. So we're going to highlight all of this. We're going to run it. Okay, so as you are probably familiar with, if you watched the previous video, we get a lot of the same things that we had when we ran the meta-analysis itself, right? We see our variance components, um, and then down here is where things get a little bit more interesting. So first of all, we were only computing this because we want this test of moderators is the only thing that I actually care about right now, okay, is this test of moderators. So as you can see, this is not significant. So that means we do not have significant differences between levels of our moderator. Now I'm going to look at residual, residual heterogeneity. We can see that this is significant. 
What this means is that there is variance in our sample that our moderator does not explain. Okay, so last but not least, if you're building tables, at least in my field of education, we have this nice table here, right? But look, it says intercept, and then we have one of our levels is missing. We actually have four levels. That is because one of the levels got assigned as the intercept. So you can do some math, and you can calculate all this stuff itself. That's time consuming, and frankly, I'm pretty lazy. So instead, what we can do is we can just run this same analysis again, but we are going to remove the intercept. And that way down here, we are going to get all four of our levels printed instead of having something as the intercept. So if we look back up top at our code, you can see I'm naming it mod grade this time. I'm taking the Q off. All of our code remains the same until right here. This is very important, okay? We need this minus one, and minus one will remove the intercept. So if we rerun this, you can see we get a very, very similar result, right? So we'll scroll up a little bit. So what we can see here is we have our intercept and then we have our three levels. And if we look at the ones that we just got, instead of an intercept, we have our actual level plus those other three levels. And you'll see these are adjusted slightly. They're a little bit different. So the first thing that I wanna tell you, this test of moderators does not tell you if there is a significant difference between these levels of the moderator. Okay, this is testing if these moderators are significantly different than zero. That's different than if there are differences between levels. That's why we ran that first analysis. Okay, that first analysis that we did with the intercept, that is what you can think of as like a Q between value, telling you if there's differences between levels. We only ran this second model so that we could get this, this table, okay? It's the only reason we ran it was so that we can get this table because uh, at least in my field, this is the table that we would typically report in a paper. We typically don't uh, show the intercept, so we would remove that intercept and show this sort of table. So if you've used R before or you have um, tried to copy paste anything out of R, you know that it's kind of a nightmare and nothing, <laughs> nothing really works properly. So instead, what we need to do is we need to actually create that table within R and then export it. So we're going to do a couple different things. First, we're going to save only the table. So we're going to say we want the summary of mod.grade. So that's this type of information, right? And we are saying specifically, we want the coefficient summary, which is all of this model results down here. And then we're going to name this as a new data item called mod.grade underscore table. So I'm going to run that first. And R tells us, cool, dude, I did that. We say, OK, thanks, R. And then we move on. So next, what we are going to do is I like to see. So this step, I should say, this step is not required, OK? This is something that I like to do because I think it adds really valuable interpretation information to our analysis. And that is the primary reason why this is here. Um, OK, so let's run through what we're doing. What this does, this next chunk of code, I'm not going to go through every single bit, but this is going to tell us the number of participants for each comparison, so, so for each level of the comparison. So like how many people were in the treatment group and how many people were in the control group, for, for example, in grades 9 through 12 or in university or in workforce. So it's going to calculate all that, and then it's going to save it as a CSV file. So I'm just going to highlight this and hit run. And then if you give me just a second here, I'm going to open that and show you what it looks like. So this is what that will look like when you actually um, open up that file. So this first column, it's going to end up getting deleted. Uh, I like to leave it there when I'm still constructing all these things, because after I run a meta-analysis, you know, I might have 10 or 20 different moderators that I want to look at. And so I'll have all these files, and I'll basically build them all into one. And so by leaving it consistent like this, it's a lot easier to move them all into one. And then I can just delete this column all at once. The other thing that I like to do is I like that this says factor in front of it because that reminds me that I did actually look at these as factors and not as continuous variables. So I leave this in for now. But what we can see is we have this new column of n exp. This is the number of participants in our experimental group. The next one is n control. This is the number of participants in our control group. And last, we have k comparisons. This is the number of comparisons for each level of the moderator. And these, in my opinion, are really, 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 really important contextual information for understanding this. So for example, if you were to look at workforce here, you're like, oh man, workforce had this huge effect size, 0.67. Oh, that's so cool. Well, guess what? 
This only came from one comparison and there were only 35 people per group. So how generalizable is that, right? So it's good, it's good preliminary information, but it's not something that I would probably want to make huge changes off of. It's just, you know, we, hey, we need some more research here. This is quite interesting. But then we also have to remember that there were no significant differences between any of these uh, levels here because our Q between was not significant. So let's go get that information, okay? So we want to save that QM test and write it into a text file. That is what this next big chunk of code is doing. And yes, I fully know this is a huge chunk of code to do that one tiny thing. But we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we made that table, and this is what it will appear as when you run it. So it's going to say QB, it has your degrees of freedom here, and then it has the value and it has your p value. And so what I do is I just copy paste this into my um, uh, CSV file that I just created so that way I don't lose it. I do that every time I run one of these analyses. Okay, so that gets us through running moderator analysis. Now, what if we want to edit this? Right, so what if we want to run another moderator? This is where things get annoying. <laughs> and so um, the way that I have always done it, and for those of you out there that know how to use R, you're probably going to be like, oh, you can use a loop or something like that. I have never tried using loops. I have always written all the code out every single time. So what I tend to do is I change this, this mod.grade here, I'll change that value. And the way that I do it actually is I'll do like control F. And first of all, I'd highlight this section. So let me let me highlight all this. So the first thing I'd do is I'd highlight everything that has to do with this particular moderator. Um, and I would copy paste it so that I have a second version because I like to keep every single uh, piece of code. So like if I ran two moderators in this, I would have two separate chunks, one for the first moderator, one for the second moderator. But the way I would edit this is I would tell it to search for like grade Q and then I would replace that with whatever I have my next variable is. So let's say, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know why my mind's going blank right now. Uh, I'll just pretend like voice is one of the um, one of the categories here. So I would replace it with voice. Now, another option, if you want to uh, have it be a little bit easier, is you can take off the queue. Oh, I see. OK, I want to show you something. So if you see, when I changed columns here, it got rid of the in selection. OK, so we would have to highlight this again like that. And we need to make sure that in selection is checked. Otherwise, it's going to get rid of that. And it's going to like replace it throughout your whole document. And you definitely don't want that, right? OK. so. What I would do is I would say something like, I want you to take the term grade and I want you to replace it with the term voice. And then that's going to replace everywhere that we see the word grade with voice. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually change our in our formulas here which variable we're looking at. So this would have to be changed to voice. This would have to be changed to voice. And then off the top of my head, I don't remember if there is anything down in here. Uh, yes, you can see. We have one here, we have one here. So the other thing that you can do, just to make this really easy, this is the way that I typically do it, is I would highlight all of this again, make sure that I have in selection checked, and then where I have grade C, I would replace that with voice as well, because that is going to replace all of these places that need it. And so after you do that, what it's going to do is it's basically going to keep the same formatting, but it's just going to throw a different variable name in there for you. So OK. Um, that walks us through how to do categorical moderator analysis in R. As you can see, um, it is not terribly complicated, but there are some important things that you need to pay attention to. And it can be a little bit tedious to uh, basically copy paste these and change all the fact all the variables in here. Um, if you don't want to calculate the number of participants and stuff, it greatly reduces the amount of things that you have to change right for each moderator. So for example, if we were just changing this, we would just change the labels here and change this variable here and then uh, that's pretty much it, right? So um, that's that's pretty much that. Um, the only thing that I will say is if you decide to leave this calculate participants out, the one thing that is missing from that previous step is writing this table. So you'd want to edit this code so that you uh, are getting this data piece into your table um, because uh, currently with this code it's it's adding all of these things in there and so you won't have that but okay that's enough rambling for me um, I will try not to ramble through any more of these uh, categorical moderator analyses uh, in the next video we're going to work on creating plots so I will see you guys then thank you